for uh, 216. We covered this at length a few weeks ago, obviously. And uh, last time we met on Sunday night, we just cranked out about uh, Romans 4 and James 2. <laughs> I'm sure that went over uh, real well. Uh, justification for Abraham. So if he's saved by grace, he doesn't get justified for another <laughs> several chapters. You get washed, justified, sanctified the instant you believe Jesus Christ. And no works are involved at all. So anyway, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 15. We who are Jews by nature, not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that might uh, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. That is two of the most curious verses you ever read in your life. That if you get saved by grace through faith, but you, you sin afterwards as Christ the minister of sin, that's one way of taking that. I'm, I'm, we're going to look at that a little bit tonight. But uh, verse number 19 says, for, the, uh, for I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth with me in the life. I live in the flesh, live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Thank you, Father, again, for the grace and mercy of Almighty God that's already been prayed, that you would send your Son to the cross of Calvary to die for our sins, knowing everything about us, every bit of our gene code, every bit of our eye color, the color of our hair, uh, everything. Most of all, knowing just how wicked our heart is and how it's bent against you, and you still went to the cross. Shed that holy, sinless blood and rose again the third day that sinners, particularly Gentiles, might be grafted in and saved and part of the body of Christ. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb of God who's taken away the sin of the world. Thank you for eternal security. Thank you for the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you for the Holy King James Bible. Pray you get the honor and glory and praise tonight in our time together. Father, we might see just how wonderful, perfect, and sinless your son is. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> this is a weird thing right here. The Bible says in verse 17, we, we left off, we covered verse 16 pretty heavily. Uh, like I said, look at verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners as Christ, therefore the minister of sin, God forbid. So I'm taking a little bit of a different angle on this tonight as we go through this. Um, Christ is not the minister of sin, but he does save sinners. Uh, 1 Timothy says, this is a faithful saying, and worthy of all I say, acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Uh, Romans 5, 8 says what? But God commended his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So uh, Jesus Christ doesn't have to partake of my sin nor be a minister of sin to save sinners. In fact, I like it that my Savior is perfect and pure and holy and without blemish and without spot. It gives me something to strive to. It gives me, gives me something to put my trust in that is absolutely 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I like that about my Savior. I wouldn't follow Buddha for 10 seconds. I know people do, but you ever read about that dude and his wives and stuff? You read about the multiple Buddhas and Dalai Lamas and, uh, 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 do I have to bring up Muhammad, what he did with a nine-year-old girl? Mm. I mean, you, you got you to, gotta, oh, Joe Smith or any stuff. No, I want a Savior who's perfect and pure, the Lamb of God who's taken away the sin of the world. <coughs> He's not the minister of sin. And as we saw this morning, as we went through the second letter of uh, Psalm 119, he could come down here walk amongst a bunch of sinners and harlots and publicans and all that, and yet not get tainted by it. I like that. That means I can live a clean life, a pure life, and still be able to touch and reach people. Uh, one of the things years ago that we had going on uh, in one of our churches was uh, RU. <laughs> that was fun. I'm not... Uh, okay, well, let's, let's pull together before we go off the rails here. RU, I'm sure, has done some good. But it's just been my thing over the years that if you preach and teach that Bible to somebody and they get into it, you don't need R, U, or A, A. God will clean you up from the inside out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell people how to get their hair cut or clothes or wear all that. When you start giving them that Bible and they fall in love with the Savior of that Bible and they start getting led by the Spirit of God through that Bible, they'll start doing what the Bible says to do is right. It'll, it'll take care of itself. But many years ago, in 
one of our churches we were, we were in, we had RU. Like I said, I'm not mocking it. But one of the things that used to come across from some of the teachers and instructors of RU was this, is that, well, I got saved out of drugs. I got saved out of drinking. So that would make me a good candidate to help people. Well, how does Jesus Christ, how is he able to help every drug-ridden, harlot, and publican, and foreign? How, how is he able to do it? He's never partaken in any of those sins. Right. You see what happens? We start dumbing down our Savior to make him just like one of us. Well, he was one of, a, uh, one of us in terms of uh, the seed of Abraham, not our blood, but flesh and blood. He was a partaker, a, a part of that. Uh, when he came down, he was a flesh and blood Judaic Jew from the, from the line of Shem. We understand that. But my Savior didn't partake in any sin, and yet he's able to succor anybody that comes to him. He's able to take them in. He can relate with anybody without trafficking in their trash. Mm. That's amazing, man. And it even happens after you get saved, like we saw this morning. You pick some dirt up in this world, so don't I. Mm. And yet, just like the father at the gate waiting for the prodigal, he says, come on home. Come on. Well, well Lord, don't, no, just come to yourself. Get up. I sinned against heaven and against thee. And the Father says, well, come back in the house and let's put the robe on. Let's shoes on your feet. Let's get back in fellowship. But the Father doesn't have to go in the pig pen to get the Son. The Son has to get out of the pig pen and go, pig pen and go back to the Father. That's the, now the fellowship you and I enjoy. Well, uh, or the cleaning up of the fellowship that we now enjoy with our, with our Father. He's light. Sometimes we get back involved in our darkness, which we shouldn't. We go back to the unfruitful works of darkness. So I want to take a look at something... Uh, Regard, or several things regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to John 8. Uh, have you folks ever heard of, and I, I, know, I, know, that, uh, I know that our, our resident Bible scholar will know what this means, Brother Kenny. No, is that, is that, uh, is that uh, has anybody ever heard of the term, the peccability of Christ? Yeah, you guys should frown like, that's like something from a Bible college. But have you ever heard of, uh, Brother Barry, what's peccability, of, the, the peccability of Christ mean? Whether or not he had the ability to sin. Exactly. So, they yeah, exactly, it gets me, it gets the line even, I've got like five lines going right now. <laughs> like, you teach that in school as like a credited class? Yes. You stupid? The pe oh, well, <laughs> could he really sin? He probably, is he liable to sin? Or, if he couldn't sin, then why was he tempted to sin? Right. But we have a Bible that tells us that, not the Greek or the Hebrew. Oh, but I want to show you how cool this is that Jesus Christ could walk this earth and yet not be the minister of sin, but still take sinners in. And now that you're saved, he's still there to cleanse you from the stuff you pick up during your daily walk with him. But he doesn't have to traffic in it. Look at the Bible says. We'll go around, uh, go around the room. Uh, Esnana, can we start? John 8, 44, go through 47. John 8, 44 through 47. Common, commonplace. Been here before several times. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Boy, that's not the meat carpenter preaching right there, is it? Uh, what do you think about us, Jesus? Well, you're of your father the devil. What? Our father's Abraham. Where's your father? Right. Well, I know my father, and he knows me, and guess what? Your father's the devil. Because he's a liar, and you guys are liars. And he doesn't abide the truth. You, guys, you, know, why, you know how he sums up? He says, he that is of God... Hear with God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not a God. That must have hit them right in the gut. Because you know what they think? I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all I possess. Who are you to tell me I'm not of God? But the issue comes up about sin. You know what happens right there? Jesus Christ says, Which of you guys sitting here convinceth me of sin? Which of you guys here could get me to cross the line and go against my Heavenly Father? Mm -hmm. Now, you and I both know, because you've been around him before. Uh, Peer pressure can be something else. We all think we're leaders and we're all stand-alone, tough people, but crowds do influence us. Mm -hmm. People do pull you in by what they say, how they dress, attitude, trends, whatever. It does affect you. It didn't affect Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You could not get that man, the Savior, to sin on his worst day. 
That's unbelievable to me. He's not the minister of sin. That gives me... Now, now, do you and I commit sin after we're saved? Yes, we do. What's the goal, though? It's to live as clean as possible. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to live one hour sinless? I, I'm not being smart at all. Have you ever tried to live one hour without sinning in thought, word, or deed? Have you ever tried two hours? You see, this is what we think. I can't make it the next five years without sinning. Why don't you start with five minutes? Right. I, I, listen, I'm not teaching sinless perfection and you're purged and you're washed out with a crazy kind of, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about <laughs> it's so strange how we're easily convinced to go back and sin. Right. We're easily persuaded to go back with the crowd and go back to our old father, the devil, and Adam and join back up where Jesus Christ rescued us from. Right. That's a weird thing, man. But I know that my Savior, you, you, know, you know what's so cool about him? Besides the, his testimony being the spirit of prophecy, and the fact that he can tell the future and the past on, I was just reading that this afternoon in Isaiah. One of the ways that those false gods could be called out as false is they can't tell the future or the past, and God can. Amen. I'll remember where that is. But anyway, but I'm saying Jesus Christ, who knows all that stuff, and he, he doesn't sin. He never has sinned. He never will sin. You, he's all these false gods. They sin all the time, man. Not Jesus Christ. Go on. Go to, uh, Kenny, I need you to get uh, 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, please. You know it's not grievous for me to go over this, even though you might think it's grievous, but for you it's safe. That's what Philippians says. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I know you, you know, this doesn't bother me to write this again to you. You might think it's a harassment to you, but this is how it gets down in your heart when you hear it. And it just keeps washing over you. And you get familiar where, where these things are in the Bible. And it'll help you out. Uh, Kenny gets 17 through 21, please. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. I love this, man. Actually, go 14. This is just so good, man. Actually, go verse 1. No, just kidding. <laughs> verse, verse 14, man. Verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that. Real quick, what does Calvinist, what does Calvinism teach? Died for the elect. Yeah. Right. How many were dead, according to that? Because we thus judge that if Christ died for all, then, then we're all what? Bye, Johnny. Bye, Johnny Calvin. Keep on going. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. Therefore, henceforth know we no man, man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is go. a new creature. All things are passed away. Amen. Behold, all things, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the word, world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. There you go. Now then, we are ambassadors of, for Christ, Amen. as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Mm -hmm that we might be made the righteousness of God. In That's him. crazy. God the Father had to make his son the embodiment of sin because you couldn't find any sin about him. Amen. The Father made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Now you know why the lights got turned out from 12 to 3. Thou art of more a pure rising and cannot behold iniquity. That's all the way back in chapter number 113, all the way down to the end of the chapter. 
God shuts the lights out as he deals with his son on that cross on behalf of me, reconciling me through his son by him whipping and chasing his son for my sin on that cross. Sin's on him, not in him. He doesn't, my point is, he doesn't know anything about sin. He's not the minister of sin. God forbid. After I'm saved, I go back to sin. Does that make us the, does that make Christ the minister of sin? No, that means I have a stupid free will that likes to go back and traffic in that foolishness. Right. But don't pin that on my Savior. Right. Yeah. That's not an excuse. But sometimes people look at us and say, well, that's a horrible testimony in the way you live and you shouldn't be doing that stuff. You are right. Don't blame it on him. Well, you're a hypocrite. You're right. I am. But don't pin it on my Savior. He's never sinned. The problem's not with him. The problem's with me as his child being disobedient. Right. I know they don't understand that because the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. I get that. But don't make my Savior a sinner. Uh, years ago, I, I know I've mentioned this before, I, I don't even know how I know this song. I must have heard it, but because of this crazy, not quite photographic memory and ears, I pick it up and it just sticks. And there's a song by this girl, I don't even know the girl's name, but the song starts out, what if God were one of us? Just a slob like one of us, sitting down and taking the on the bus. Well, he did come down here like us, but there's a big difference there, lady. He didn't sin, he's not filthy like you and I are, because right. he's not the minister of sin. God had to make him to be sin for us, the embodiment of sin. I mean, remember when uh, in John 3, what did the Bible say? As Moses lifted up the what? I'm not saying Jesus Christ became the devil. I'm not saying that. But it got about as close as you can get, man, up on that cross. He's punishing. The prince of this world is judged. John 12. Mm -hmm. My sin is being judged. And who's the one that has to take it? The lamb without spot and blemish. That's a great song that Tim and Stephanie used to sing, The Lamb. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most phenomenal songs ever. It just takes your heart and your mind through them giving up the lamb and walking through the marketplace to take up that lamb and take him to the slaughter. That's Jesus Christ, a perfect, pure lamb. Amen. No sin. But he did bear our sins on his body, but he's, he's not a sinner, man. I think that's what pe ticks people off is that somebody made it through this life being unscathed and untouched by sin. And God says, you match that, you get to heaven. Oh, we're all sinners, we can't match that. Then take his free gift by grace and faith. Well, I'm not doing that, I'll make it on my own. What did you just say, you can't make it? Do you understand how man is just wrecked? Just wrecked. You have somebody that did it for you. Uh, a lot of folks like to get in the Hall of Fame on their own, and they should. But if you could get into the Hall of Fame of Heaven by somebody else without burning hell, I'll take that. You're a chicken, 100%. I'll take that one and get out of it and go home to glory. I will ride that free coat right to glory. That's why when we said before, when Paul said, I wish myself a curse for my brethren, right. I wouldn't give up my salvation for anybody. Right. I'm sorry, man. That's something that just, I, I don't, I'm not there. I'm not there where I could say, I'll go to hell for my brother Frank and sister Terry to be saved. I'm not there, man. I'll go to hell so the people in Hartford, the Excel Center, can get saved. I'm not there yet, man. I want to keep my salvation and still see it happen. But I don't want to trade places with them in the pit of hell, man. And Jesus Christ says, yeah, I'll take all that. Don't worry about it. Free gift. Come to me. You can have it. Because I've never sinned. That's why, that's why my Father will accept me and not you. Man. Is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. What, what, what kind of foolish thing is that, man? Hebrews chapter number uh, 4. Brother Burke, Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4, please, if you could. What you preach on today, by the way, Brother Burke? Just out of curiosity, not enough grilling here. I'm just uh, curious. Character. Character of Christ. Sweet. Have to check that one out, man. Give it a big thumbs down on the internet. The puke face I love so much on the emojis. That's like the only one I would like in the ghost, of course. Like, I, love, I like the ghost. And in Sunday school, I... Oh, you did both? Yeah. In Sunday school, I stole your walking on the water thing. <laughs> you just walk on the water. Oh, the, oh the in the center of the earth? Yeah. Because I was doing type, typology. Oh, wow. And yeah, so I'm like, I'm stealing the biggest thing on the water. <laughs> We're all, we all steal from everybody, except for that one. That's a that's a trademark, buddy. That's a, that's a copyright. <laughs> I wouldn't have stolen that one up here around people. 
<laughs> it's like it's like the you know, brother Bert. Oh, never mind. We got a couple seconds here. So we were talking Sunday morning. And brother Bert was teaching Sunday school about uh, you know uh, having the Spirit and separate separation through the Spirit of God. And I said you got to be careful. We were talking afterwards. I went up to him. I said you got to be careful because you can be separate and not have the Holy Ghost. That's in Jude. And I showed it to him. He said, "Oh, that's really cool." Next time he used it, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "He's like, yeah, you can be separate." I, that's that's me. <laughs> and God's up there going, "None of you are getting credit for that. <laughs> None of you get credit for that because you're hotty, and he stole it from me. He's a thief, <laughs> He's a thief and you're a proud hotty scorn." <laughs> Wood hand stubble, bro. Awesome. I'm serious. <laughs> Wood hand stubble, man. Seriously. Unreal. Uh, 412, Brother Bert, to the end of the chapter, please. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, Amen. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Now, real quick, people would say the his and the him refer to God. No, what's the him and the his refer to in verse 13? It's the word of God. It has a personality. I'll tell you how you know that. Over in uh, Matthew, when Peter pulls out the sword, it says he puts the sword back in his sheath. A sword has a personality. It's just God put that in, man, saying, oh, yeah. That'll match Hebrews 4.13. Anyway, sorry, it's a little, that's a little chicken nugget there. Go ahead. <laughs> Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we Amen. are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy Amen. and find grace and help to help in time of need. <clears throat> Though he is 100% sinless, he knows how you and I get tempted, and he sees how mankind falls after telling man, do not eat from that tree. I've set you up perfectly for as long as you want. In fact, you can go eat the tree of life right now. Right. But you just can't eat of that one over there. So he's watched all this, and then he comes down in a body, he gets tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. What a great thing that is. That he is tempted in every single aspect, every point we are, yet without sin. So I now have somebody to go to that understands my problems when I pray to him and ask him for some deliverance. Doesn't we quoted this morning, we were, we were talking about, uh, there is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the what? Temptation you make a what? A way of escape. How can you make a way of escape? Because he knows what you're going through because right. he was tempted just like you were. Right. I, I like that. You know what? My Savior's not afraid to get down in the dirt and plant with me. Right. And water with me. And work with me. And, let, and cry with me. And laugh with me. You don't have a God like that in the face of this earth if you ever say the gods of Rome. And Zeus, you ever know how they hate each other? <laughs> Constantly beating each other and Hades and it you don't beat anybody. You're not gonna find anybody like the Godhead. Mm -hmm. The love, care, and character. And the fact he'd come down here, why would you come down here? Why don't you just wipe the whole thing out and just endure enjoy the praise and glory for all eternity? Why would you why would you even bother coming down here done? I don't know that man, other than the great love he has. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna show you how I can make it through life sinless. So nobody has an excuse. Well, Lord, you just, I, I made it through. Right. I made it through. Well, you're God. Oh, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I've got the same flesh, different blood, but I, I, I got flesh and blood just like you do. I mean, you think about the women that are around Jesus Christ. I'm not being pornographic or, or I mean, a woman taking a very actor on his feet. You think she had a lot of clothes on? Right. Think about Mary Magdalene possessed with seven devils. I mean, you think, who are always around him? Women. <clears throat> Who's he talked to in John 4? She, he's five husbands. Right. And you know what the disciples say? Oh, we don't question you at all. We know you'd never do anything. Right. You can leave your wife with Jesus Christ and he'll never do anything to her. Mm -hmm. You can leave your kids with him and he'll never do anything to them. Right. That's the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Not the filthy last temptation of Christ and all that nonsensical foolishness, man. Making my Savior a fornicator. Now this, uh, what's, what's the one that's out now? The... 
Um, Dan Brown wrote it. The only reason I know is because like he has my name yet. Uh, da Vinci Code. Doesn't he have kids that didn't Jesus have kids that somehow made their way to Europe? Are you smoking dope? You know what it is? They want to make him just as dirty as regular sinners. They want to dumb him down. What if God was one of us? Yeah, you're trying to make him just like, well, he was, but without sin. Right. That's a big difference because now God can say, I'll take his sinlessness for your sinful nature. I'll take his holiness for your unholiness. Right. I'll take his cleanness for your uncleanness. That's Bible salvation today, man. Go on with me. Deb? You were, I have to tell you, Deb, you were staring at me tonight like you didn't have your Bible, and I saw the hands. I, I thought maybe this was going to be a bad night. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, you recovered. You recovered. I was like, oh, no. I have to have church discipline again. Uh, 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Oh, man. 1 Peter chapter number 1. I mean, if you ever get a chance, there's a great study that Brother James does on blemishes and spots. You've got to check it out. And this is where one of the ones he goes to. It's really cool. Uh, Deb, can you pick it up? 13 through 21, please. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 21. Wherefore, gird up the Lord with your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is, in, that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, Amen. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who with respect of persons judges according to every man's work, half the time of your sojourn here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, there it is. Amen. who verily was born ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, he is in glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. That's awesome. That's a very lamb without blemish, without spot. What a great thing that is, man. You know how big that was back in the day when you're offering a sacrifice? Uh, one of the things in Malachi was, why do you always bring me the halt and the lame and the thing with the, you know, you know the, the choo-choo with square wheels and the squirt gun that shoots jelly and the dolly with one eye, you know, all that crazy stuff, man? Well, Jesus Christ has nothing wrong with him. I mean, he goes to that cross as a pure white lamb. Doesn't, isn't there a school rhyme that says Mary had a little lamb? Right. And his fleece is white as snow, and everywhere the lamb was sure to go. That stuff comes from Jesus Christ being perfectly spotless, sinless, and clean. That's part of the great power of his resurrection, is that because he's holy and clean and just, you've heard the phrase, you can't keep a good man down. How are you going to keep that man in the grave when he's never sinned? I mean, he has to die and rise again the third day. I, I understand that. But you can't keep him locked away in that ground. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I, I made it so I, I'm, card leads, card place. So now i got to go to Romans there, Brother Kenny. Romans chapter 1. But he's, he is a lamb without blemish, without spot. That also makes his blood 100% pure. And you know, folks, the life of the flesh is in the blood. You have a blood problem. I have a blood problem. Uh, not just for physical disease, but most of all for spiritual disease. Once that female took the, the grape and man took the grape and they got, you know, that their blue blood's washed out with red blood, that's sinful blood, man. You now need the blood of a sinless man to redeem your sin sick blood and soul. That's Jesus Christ. You don't realize how big this is, man. The peccability of Christ. Of course he could have sinned, but he didn't. That's why God can accept his sacrifice on my behalf. The just for the unjust. Mm -hmm. Man, that's huge. Romans chapter 1, the Bible says this, Paul, servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated of the gospel of God, which he had a pr promised afore by his prophets and the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, watch, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom, all, among whom are ye also the call of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see how he raised them up in verse number four? Declared to be the Son of God with power according to what? The Spirit of... You know why he had to raise them? He's 100% holy. No blemish, no spot. He's got to, he's got to come up. And because you and I are in Christ and have that imputed righteousness to us, for it made it be sin for us who knew no sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in him, we get to go up with him. I mean, come on, think about it now. God looks down and sees you and I and says, I don't know what you're talking, what sin are you talking about? Right. I don't remember them anymore. What are, you, what are you guys talking about? The record's clear. Now I understand we do pick up sin and we have to deal with it. And some men's sins are open before and going for the judgment. I don't think sin is the issue at the judgment seat of Christ, but don't tell me that sin in your life that's unchecked doesn't affect your rewards. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that sin unchecked and that just a carnal Christian is going to get the same reward as one who's dedicated their life to Jesus Christ. That's not the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. This isn't communism. And that unchecked sin in a Christian's life, you know, God chastens you. You get it right. Thank God for it. But then maybe it goes on down the road and you don't heed the chasing. You stiffen your neck, harden your heart. And then it goes down the road and God says, you know what, this, 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 this child is just not listening time to take him home to glory and you go home before the time God had allotted for him. Don't tell me that doesn't affect your judgment seat report card. Don't tell me that. No way. I don't, it's not a judgment of sin up there. My sin was taken care of the day I trusted Christ. I get that. Past, present, and future. But don't tell me the stuff we get involved in to save people doesn't affect that gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. You can't tell me that. I just, there's too much in the Bible for that. There's no way. That's why he's sinless. I go because of that sinlessness. But I've got to, I've got to check myself out. I've got to examine myself. First Corinthians 11. I've got to check myself out every day according to what the Word of God says. Thought life, action life, attitude, all that stuff. Or maybe not. Romans chapter 6. <laughs> Romans chapter 6, man. Romans chapter 6. You don't confess your sins to get saved. You confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. That's the difference between Romans 10 and 1 John 1. Fellowship versus salvation. They're not the same. I don't confess my sins to get saved. I didn't, I don't, I didn't sit there and uh, read off everything to God when I asked him to save me. I said, Lord, I know I'm dead. <laughs> going to hell. My brother showed me this. I, I didn't say that, but I knew it. Yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm doomed. I know I am. I have no hope. I'm without Christ, without God in the world. I 100% I know it. But I'll take the free gift of eternal life that your book says mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't confess any sins that day I got saved. Mm -hmm. I confessed Christ with an believe in my heart. Mm -hmm. God raised from the dead. Saved me. But after I get saved, now there's walking in darkness or walking in light. And so that's a big thing. Well, we're not going to get into that tonight. Romans chapter 6. Now let's get into some personal where the verse in Galatians where we're studying can now take on. After we looked at the sinlessness of Jesus Christ, let's take a look at my responsibility and your responsibility as a child of God. Karen, 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? <laughs> that is as plain as plain can be. You want to know about the Christian life and the battle? Read Romans 6, 7, and 8 a few dozen times. The inner man, the outer man. That's it, it's it, These three chapters are in, in Galatians 5 as well. Walk in the spirit, you're not fulfilled lust of life. You take those and this, man, it, it'll help you square away your head and your thinking. 
and it's from the Pauline epistles because the battle is there, man. You know when Rome, does anybody know when Romans was written about how many years after Paul was saved? Does anybody remember or have like a rough idea of how how many years later the epistle, the Romans epistle was written? You guys have a, like a rough idea? I, if I've read it, and I've read a couple different guys, I've read th four different guys, it's a, a almost, it's almost 30, it's like 27 to 29, sometimes 30 years after his conversion on the Damascus Road. Because remember, where does he end his life at? Where does God take his life? Rome. So my point is, is that 30, let's just round number, approximately 30 years after you say, he's still saying, I don't do the things I want to do, and I do the things I don't. Paul, you know how many churches you started? You know how many missionary trips you've taken? You know how many lives you've, you've changed with the preaching of the gospel of Christ? You know how many folks you've discipled? Yeah, I know that. And let me tell you, it's a battle every single day as to who's going to run my life. You've been saved 30 years. You're the, you're the, you're the apostle of the Gentiles. We're reading your letters now, man. We're going through them. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now that left unchecked, you're going to do what you want to do against your God. And he says right there, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any You, when God, remember, before you got saved, you were what, according to Ephesians 2? Dead, dead, trespass dead and trespass sins. sins. Now you're what? Alive unto God, but what? Dead unto sin. Oh, okay. You were dead trespassed to sins, right? Now you're alive in Christ and supposed to be dead to sin. But then we all resurrect that old. That's what that Galatians thing is saying. If we came to Jesus Christ to get his righteousness, and righteousness is by Christ, and we're justif justified by faith through Christ, and then we go back and start resurrecting that old life, is Christ is God? Is Christ the minister of sin? Did he save you for nothing? That you go back and traffic in that? Or is Christ the minister of sin? Is he like? Is he like the sin you partake in? Did he partake in? No, he did not. Right. So I'm to live the life that would be pleasing to God through the power of the Spirit of God. It's not how many tracks you hand out or how many church uh, uh, services you attend. It has nothing to do with it. It's your walk with the Lord personally. Exactly. It will help you deal with this thing. Karen, you're not done yet. You have bonus time. You put an extra quarter in the arcade machine. <laughs> chapter number, uh, chapter six. Karen, can you go up? Oh, this is big. This is big. You know what? I'm going to come back to you, Karen, okay? Put a bookmark there. Haley, pick it up verse 11 and go to 23. Mm -hmm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. I mean, it's cold here, but isn't your flesh just like kind of twitching right now? Mm -hmm. Saying, how dare you tell me I'm dead? This is my life. This is my life. No, you're bought with a price. We saw it this morning. Amen. It's not my life. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, it's not my life anymore. If I'm going to be a Bible Christian. Go ahead. Either yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. For God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, that ye have obeyed from the heart Amen. that form of doctrine which Amen. was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. <laughs> For as ye have yielded your members mm. servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Isn't that a crazy verse? S lost people can't stop sinning because mm. they're not free. Well, I went to AA and got over my alcohol. Then you usually pick up smoking. Well, I get over smoking. Then I pick up gambling. And what I mean, uh, it just it's a never ending circle, man. That's when you're in sin loss. But thanks be to God, I don't have to serve that anymore. You know what the crazy part about my 
salvation is and my Christianity is and yours, is that I, I said a few weeks ago, the Lord saves you, he washes you, he justifies you, puts you in the body of Christ, and then he says, here's your will back, Dave. Really? Yeah, I was, see if you're going to yield to the old man or yield to me. I, I've saved you. You're going home to glory forever. You're washed, sanctified, justified. You're mine forever. Sealed with the day of redemption. Now here's your will back. Are you going to use it for me or for you? Are you going to go back to serve and sin? Are you going to serve me? That's the Christian life in a nutshell, buddy. That's the battle that goes on every day. And if you don't think that's real, hmm, I don't know what Bible you're reading, man. It's real. Keep on going, please. <clears throat> Hail. Fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed. For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness Amen. and the end everlasting life. Look at this. For the wages of sin is death. Now, how many times do you use that? Have you used that verse? And I use that verse in witnessing of somebody. In the context, does that have anything to do with witnessing of somebody? He gave you a gift, but he's telling you if you go back and walk in your sin, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. You say that's not true. We're not going to go to Romans 8 right now. But for it to be currently minded is what? Yeah, man. Well, why'd you get saved, Galatians, where we are in chapter 2, and then go back and do this? Christ, is Christ getting ascribed back to, you, to your sin now, and you're claiming to be a child of God, but you're trafficking in that sin, the stuff you should be ashamed of, you're going back and doing? Is Christ the minister of sin? He saved you. Is he the minister of sin, and you're his child, because you're going back and living in sin? God forbid! In fact, God forbids right here! God forbid a saved person goes back and lives the life they used to live before they were saved. God forbid. Because you know what? It makes Jesus Christ look like he's the minister of sin. Oh, oh the Lord will sit down and have a beer with me. He's cool with that. I mean, he turned water into wine, you know. You better watch it, buddy. My Savior is sinless, buddy. Without blemish, without spot. Kept in all points like his. We are yet without sin. That's pretty big. But as a child of God, Galatians, written to say people justified by faith and not by the works of the law, why go put yourself back underneath the bondage of that sin, man, when you don't have to? I'm free from it. I'm under grace, not the law. But you put yourself back under that law when you go back and start sinning again, yielding your members to unrighteousness, uncleanness. It's a weird thing, man. Uh, isn't it more fun to study the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God than this stuff? Huh. And like give them to the poor and all that stuff. That's, yeah, I don't want to give them to the poor. I'm like, <clears throat> like getting slaughtered up here, man. You know, go teach on the baptisms. That's more cool. Because it always affects my head, not my heart. Right. And you ought to know your Bible. But if you change the way you walk and live, man. All right, Romans chapter 7. Okay, while well, we're right here, we're going to continue just a little bit because we're having such a good time. Uh, chapter 7, 1 through 6, Tay, please. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she, hath call, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no longer adulteress, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. That's a great companion verse to Ephesians 5, isn't it? Christ being our bridegroom, mm -hmm. us being the chaste virgin. I'm married to Christ now. That's the picture here is under the law, a husband and a wife. What's he then shifted to and say, this is what I'm really trying to teach you. I'm married to Christ now by grace through faith. If I go back and live that old life, I'm committing adultery against my husband. Well, I've never committed adultery except on my wife. 
Have you ever gone back to living the old life? Have you ever gone back and served the old master? It's adultery. That's some crazy stuff right there, man. Oof, man, keep on going, please. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Amen. I'm free now to serve Jesus Christ. And so aren't you. Don't go back under that bondage and that foolishness of the old sinful life. <clears throat> and like we saw this morning, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed through yeah. there to according to our word. If you do mess up, fess up, get that, get in that book, have that washing of the water, cleanse that thing, and get rid of that filth and move on for the Lord. Mm -hmm. What Christians, uh, excuse me, say people do, I think they get beaten down, they don't see any remedy, and they don't get back in the fight. A just man falleth how many times? Proverbs 24. Seven times. Seven, Seven times. times. But he rises up again. If he's a just man, he rises again. Right. You're going to get beat down, man. Don't stay down. He's, this is our apostle. Almost 30 years after he's been saved, saying, you're going to battle with this till the day you go home. It's who you're going to yield to to run your life. Who, who are you going to let? Are you going to commit adultery and go back to the old man, the old life? Or are you going to stay true to your husband, Jesus Christ, and walk in the Spirit? Is Christ the minister of sin? You're saved now, and you're going back living like you... There's no fruit in that stuff. Oh, I remember the days where you said, I don't want to remember those days. I don't want to talk about them. Right. I'm ashamed of those things. So shouldn't you be. You shouldn't be trapping back there. Oh, I remember we used to drink. Why are you telling that to people now that you're saved? There might be somebody out there who has a proclivity and some part of their sin nature that wants to go try that, and they hear that you made it through all right. They might not make it through all right. right. They might try it and get crippled out for the rest of their life. But you had to brag about what you did in jail or what you did before. And I met the Lord and everything turned out right. It may not turn out right for somebody that hears that stuff. Just say, you know what? I know what I was before I met the Lord. I know what the Lord did for me. That stuff is in the past. They're behind his back. They're washed clean. I'm moving on for the Lord and so shouldn't you. It's light and fluffy on a Sunday night like a nice three egg omelet. Now, stay with me. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this. Then I, Karen, I did promise you to swing back. And I never break a promise to my wife. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, a liar. I'm back on the law. I'm an adulterer. I mean, so I'm hosed, man. I am hosed. Stick with me. Let, go to 714 with me. I want to see if you guys can pick this out. I, I know you can. I'm not, I'm not testing you to try and mess with you. But see if you can pick this out with me. For we... Uh, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now, follow this with me. For that which I do, I allow not. Who would the first I be? For that which I do would be me. I, I, I uh, do, I allow not. That's him. Mm -hmm. So it's me and him. Now watch. For that, uh, for what I would do, him, that do I not. Me, but what I hate, him, that do I, me. And you just go down through the whole thing like that, and you realize that you are a schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you know, roses are red, violets are blue. How'd you guys get in my room? I don't know who I am, you know, something like that. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, you have no idea. But people sit there and make fun of him. Oh, he's saved. Why would he do that? You don't know what he's been going through or she's been going through and they're living in the flesh. You might catch them on the worst day of their life and they're like, are you telling me saved people have never committed a murder? Are you telling me saved people never have gotten drunk? Are you telling me, I, I, come on, man. I wish to God we didn't, but that's the battle he's telling you is that saved people, the Holy Ghost inside you doesn't want to do it. Right. But me, me, I like to do it. And it's always, it's warring in my members every day. I can't wait to get the glorified body. Amen. Thank God. But the practice run starts down here. Mm. So that Christ doesn't get accused of being the minister of sin. Oh, that's some Savior serving there. Look at the way, oh, they call themselves a Christian. Look at the, uh, 
don't blame my Savior, but we do get attached to it. And you guys know, you've been with us, go to 1 Peter, we'll finish up. You know, you, you folks know you've been witnessing to folks for, for some years, and you've had a testimony with some, some folks for years. You know what happens when you screw up one yep. time. Yep. They'll never forget it. I, I understand that blood washed, forgiven, restore fellowship, but you know how long it takes to get that back with that person? Oh, man, it stinks. I understand you don't walk around three inches off the ground with some weird glowing, you know, sackcloth and ashes garb and a handle on your head. But man, when you mess up and they catch it, you got to be quick to say, you know what, you, you got me like David. You got me. You're right. Right. You got me. You're right. I, I'm, I'm going to try not to do it again in front of you because you know, it's a bad test. And you know what? You got to take the heat. You can't justify yourself after that. Right. You just got to build up some credibility now. It just takes time. It's horrible. And I, like I said, you can't live this weird, super sanctimonious, separated life where you don't ever. But you got to watch it, man, because they're watching us big time. You don't think they are, but they're watching the scripture verse on your computer. They're watching the Bible on your desk. They're seeing you have a track on your, they're watching it. Right. And they're just waiting for you to, I'll get them, I'll get them. Weird, man. But that's, that's the battle you're in, man. You do know that the devil has his children, right? Mm. And you do know that the devil hates God, Jesus Christ, hates Israel, and hates us can't get your soul now, but boy, he can sure do a number on your testimony. Right. First Peter chapter 4. Karen, I told you I was coming back to you. First Peter chapter 4. Oh, man, this is rough. I mean, not really, but <clears throat> 4, 1 through 5, please. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now, real quick, I understand Peter's the apostle. So I understand it, but that sounds that sounds really Pauline-ish, like Romans six, what we just read. It's pretty cool. I'm not. I understand what's going on. But I'm like that's like Peter's telling you, don't don't spend the rest of your days and your time in the flesh. Don't live after that. Go ahead, keep going, please. For the time past of our lives may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, and excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatry. Look at this. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Why don't you party with us anymore? How come she don't go to the concerts anymore? Why aren't you not us? I'm trying to walk the way my Savior would have me to walk, and I can't walk with him and walk with you. Are you better than us? No, I'm just trying to live the life Jesus Christ has for me, and in Christ I am better than you. You ought to get in the same boat and get saved before you die and go to hell. I can record that for you if you like to keep it in your pocket. Sure you're <laughs> not in trouble. But I'm, I'm serious, man. But why don't you go riot with us? Why don't you go to the same places we go anymore? The Lord saved me. I, I can't go to that same excess of wine, banquetings, revelings. I, the bomb, well, I, I can't do it anymore. I, I, in fact, you know what? I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. What do you mean you don't want? The Lord changed me. You know what? I'm not thirsty for that anymore. Right. He quenched my thirst. <clears throat> Years ago, this is fall of 87. You're like, we're already alive in 1987. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> 1987, I think I've told you guys this before, I'm not trying to be redundant, but we, I went back to school for my uh, junior year. My arm was all tore up from the, the, the glass window in August of that same year. So I went back to school, second floor Broadhurst dorm, and uh, had AIC, man. And I can remember walking in, and Timmy Ayer was sitting there, and Dave Whitehead was sitting there, basketball player, football player. We are, I remember it was room, room 212. Karen knows she's been on the dorm. You know, your feet stick to the floor when you walk through it because of all the alcohol that was spilled on the ground. <laughs> Orange hall, man. You know, and it stinks. You're like, oh, man. So anyway, I walked in and said, how's it going, guys? And I had just spent this whole summer, you know, playing baseball with my brother. And, you know, just going to church and all that stuff, witnessing the folks. And public witness all, and all that stuff. Met Dr. Ruckman that year and the whole, the whole nine. And just went back and I'm like, oh, man. 
and they were in there drinking. I didn't know that. I just walked in and said, hey, what's going on, guys? And they're like, and they're like uh, well, go grab a beer. I'm like, no, man. I'm not going to do that. And they're like, come on, man. And then they started giving me a few, you know, whatever. I said, guys, I'm not doing that. I, I need to tell you this, that the Lord saved me many years ago. And I've lived like a fool in front of you for the last couple of years. And I hope by the grace of God, I don't do that in front of you ever again. Mm. And I walked out. I went to my room, 216. Aaron knows very well. You gotta put your foot in the ground because I cannot walk to the same excess of right because now they're putting Jesus Christ with my life. And if I go back to him, the same sin I did, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Mm. Don't put you're my savior. I'm not going to put my savior down the hog pen with me when I go prodigal. Mm. I know he won't, but I'm not going to drag his name down there with me. Right. And they want, they think it's strange. Why don't you do that stuff anymore? I serve a different master now. Come on. I serve a different God now. Amen. And I'm sorry I did those things in front of you. Now I have to earn your trust back and I have to build up some testimony in front of you. And I remember Dave Whitehead going, I'll, I'll finish with this. I remember Dave Whitehead coming to church with me at Tabernacle Baptist. You remember Dave Whitehead, about 6'6", six, six, real skinny kid, had like glass feet. He'd get break his foot like I could shoot. I mean, he's a basketball player. He was good. He could light it up from anywhere. And I'm like, you're like Mr. Glass, man. You snap your feet like every, you know, you take a step and you're like, he'd be, he'd be in a cast. Like, I'm like, seriously, you're, you're a cast member for a movie, man. You're in a cast so much. But I remember him coming to church at Tabernacle Baptist Church back in the day when it was called Tabernacle. Starship Enterprise or whatever God. <laughs> I'm sorry, God, Death Star. I call it, it's called Life but I call it Death Star. That's mean. I should, no, it's not mean. It's Death Star. Anyway, um, and we went to church. I remember him sitting here because part of the thing we used to play basketball at the Word of Life basketball tournaments. And one of the things was you had to go to church. The guys that you brought in, even if they were lost, they had to go to church leading up to the tournament. And I could witness to Whitey and the whole crew, and they would come to the church. And I can remember him sitting there listening to it, and he brought his girlfriend one time, Jen. At the time, I think he ended up marrying her. And I can remember the invitation was given. I remember this vividly. John Hall was sitting right to my right. And I can remember vividly the invitation was given, and I could tell. I, I, you, you know what? You kind of can tell somebody's getting nervous. They're, you know, they're in the computer. You can kind of tell. And I'm like, he's going to go for it. I'm going to go with him. Lord, I'm going to go with him, please. And I can remember the invitation was given by, by, by Herb Coombs. And the invitation was given, and Whitey went to get up, and his girlfriend put her hand on his knee and stopped him. Amen. Because I was looking like this. Normally, it's going to be great. And Jen put her hand right on his leg and just stopped him. Yeah. I don't know if he ever gets saved. I have no idea. But I'm hoping at least he saw something different in my life those last several years I was with him than the years he saw before. Because I don't want my Savior to get ascribed with my sin when he's sinless and holy and perfect and pure. Amen. They need to see that. Amen. But they do ascribe the Christian life and my Savior, or my, they do ascribe my Savior to the way I live. <clears throat> if he's really a great Savior, why don't you live like him? Yes. Don't let him become the minister of sin in your life. Amen. Brother Kenny, pray for us. Please, if you could. Thank you, Lord, that we know we can take you anywhere we go if you live inside of us and that we want to be more like you we strive for that by reading your word Amen. flushing out cleansing and cleaning all the filth from this world Amen. and just thank you for this sunday and um renewing that battery and putting more faithful truths to your word that we know are in there and i just pray that uh, we can be the light in the darkness of this world as we go on for this Amen. week. Amen. Amen. Just pray that you know, give us somebody through that, through our lives that we need to speak Amen. with. Or, uh, Amen. Just show that we are that light and we can give a little bit more um, to your honor and glory and uh, be so happy just one just one more uh, walks down that aisle. Gets Amen. Just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.